Okay, before I start today's Retro Hub and PSP setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too and I'm always really appreciative of that. So if you've not been following my Retro Hub little series I'm putting together, if you've yet to experience Retro Hub, it's a front-end emulator, and I'll leave the link in my description for the initial setup guide. Retro Hub is a very awesome and free front-end, very underrated. So we're doing PPSSPP today for this, and of course this is a very amazing emulator. So what we're going to do firstly is just go over to the PPSSPP.org website and download this. So we can actually pay for a premium version of this just to support the developers. We've also got a choice here of Android, Windows, and Mac OS. We've also got Linux and iOS and etc. I'm going to be downloading the portable version of this for Windows. You can use the install if you want, but just for this setup, I've already downloaded the portable version of this. And it's actually on my desktop right now. So you're going to download a zip folder if you get the portable version. So we've got the contents inside here. We're, of course, going to go into the Retro Hub folder, into the Emulators folder. And what I'm going to do just here is right-click New Folder and call this one PPSSPP. So, yeah, if you're new to this little series, you can see just here each system or emulator is literally what I've covered so far. So in the PPSSPP folder, what we're going to do is just drag those contents of the portable zip folder just there inside. And we're just going to wait for those to extract into that folder. And if we come out, we're then going to go to the root of the Retro Hub directory and create another new folder. And we're going to name this one PSP. If we then go into that PSP folder, we can then drag and drop our ISO games inside of this one. So we got R-Type Tactics.ISO and Ridge Racer.ISO. Just drop those inside, and once everything's been extracted, which it is, we're then going to open up Retro Hub. Okay, so if we look on the left hand side, we have now got another new system added PSP, and everything's looking really cool with that. So, what we're going to do is what we always do we need to press Escape. And once we're in this menu, we're just going to go down and actually before we start adding the emulator, we're going to go to Scraper and we're going to scrape the artwork for these two PSP games. So under Scraper, we're going to go to Games to Scrape. If we just scroll down, we can actually find out just here what we're going to scrape. So I'm going to leave everything here as always to default. So it's going to scrape everything and I'm going to go down to Games to Scrape without metadata. Because as we know, if you've been following this series I'm doing, you'll know that I'm downloading the artwork as we go along. So, two games selected, which is of course my PSP games. Scrape now. Now, on some games, like it normally does, we might have a choice. For example, we've got R-Type Tactics and we also got R-Type Tactics 2 just here. Of course, I'm using the original Tactics, so I'm going to go to confirm on this. And if I then go down to Ridge Racer.iso, just like our type tactics, we got two games for the PSP. So we want the original Ridge Racer for this one. So we're going to go to confirm. And that's it. Everything's done there. So if we go to finish, and if I just come out, we should see under PSP, there we go. Both of the games have now got artwork. So we do need to add to the emulator and system. So press escape to come back into the main menu. Down to systems. And then at the top, we're just going to drop this down. And we should find PSP or Sony PlayStation Portable. One or the other. So it's not going to be too hard to find that one. There we go. So Sony PlayStation Portable. So of course, we got the photo with the PSP, the original model with the logo there. And it's also going to tell us under emulators that we can use RetroArch, PPSSPP, or the standalone. Of course, I'm using a standalone version of PPSSPP. Supported extensions, we got .iso just here. But if you've got .els, .csos, or etc., you can actually use them as well. So we've got this part in place and what we're going to do next is go down to emulators and again from the top we're then going to look for 
PPSSPP because that's the emulator which we're going to be using with this and we just dragged this one into the emulators folder. Here it is. And then under path we're going to need to link this up to where the actual emulator executable is. So in this case it's automatically done it for me which is a bit strange. If you're new to this just go to load and then we need to navigate to where your directory is for retro hub so in my case it's in users and it's in my systems folder jamie and here's my desktop folder and my retro hub folder is right just here if i go inside emulators and we're looking for ppsspp now we got two versions of this i'm going to be using the windows 64 and there we go that's now in place and of course we next got to go to save changes and if we then press escape to come out, now we can actually boot up a game. But the really awesome thing with PPSSPP is that we can really enhance, and I mean really enhance, boost the graphics. Let's just open up one of these games. So we're going to need to play around with settings to give us a full screen mode too. It's working just fine with my controller. Here we go. Rich, oh yeah. Three. Okay, so everything's working fine, as you can see there. Um, yes, my controller didn't need setting up with this. So what I've done, I've just accessed the PPSSPP menu, and what this has done, just pause the game. We're actually just gonna go to exit to menu, and here is PPSSPP itself. From here. We can go to settings and we can then start playing around with some video settings and like I said a minute ago we can really make all PSP portable games look like they were designed for the big screen. Uh, so first of all what we're going to do is enable VSync, that's going to reduce any screen tear. Of course we're going to want full screen mode on so the game's launching full screen rather than what I've currently got which is window mode. And we've got other bits and pieces here. We've got render and resolution. Now, if you've got a lower-end computer, I wouldn't attempt putting this up to anything past, say, three times PSP. I'm going to put this on 1080p just for this setup guide. Other things we got just here is the vice. And as you can see, I'm using a GeForce RTX. If you do have a graphics card, then make sure it's selected just here. Don't be using something like the Intel XE graphics like I've got just here. And if we just scroll down a little bit further, we're going to come across more options here to make things look better for all PSP games. So we've got upscale type. So this by default is on times BRZ. I'm going to try hybrid plus by cubit. Upscale level. I'm going to boost this up to around three times. And again, just like resolution, if you've got a lower end computer, either keep this off or at least put it to two times. Otherwise, your games will likely lag. If we scroll down just a little bit further, we've also got anastrophic filtering. As you can see, for me by default, this is on 16 times. Anastrophic filtering is going to really define textures in the game. So, again, just like other things like resolution, if you've got a lower end computer, don't go anywhere past two times, otherwise you might face some lag problems. I'm going to go for two times on this one. And under controls just here, we actually can map our controls. So if I go inside of here, we can then, for example, well, map controls. But I don't need to do this at all because it's already pre-configured and that's a really good thing about this emulator. If we come out of here, we've got audio options such as enabling sound, global volume. If we go to system, and this has happened to me in the past, it might download in a foreign language, and I think it was French for some people out there. So if that's a problem and you can't read any of it, then normally it's around your sixth option down, system, and then language, and then obviously change it to say English if that's the language you speak. Uh, we also got theme just here. So if I change this to say dark, we can then change the theme of the GUI itself. Okay, so let's go back into the game. So I'm going to open it up from here. Go! Three laps to go.
Now, whilst we're in game, you can actually, or in my case, I'm using left trigger, and this brings up the menu, and from here, we can actually play around with the settings whilst we're playing the game. So, if we just go to settings, from here, in this case, I'm going to just increase the rendering resolution. I'm going to try my luck with 4K, and I can then just go back into the game, go to back, and continue. <laughs> And I was saying just a minute ago that games look incredible with PPS SPP and there's no denying, just look at this, you wouldn't have thought this was actually designed for a portable around 17, 18 years ago. So normally what I do to make games look better is actually test things whilst I'm playing them. So for example, I'll just establish actually running this at 4K is fine with my computer so we can go ahead and start increasing more settings. So. Your main settings to make games look better is obviously render and resolution. And if we scroll down again, we also got upscale level, which is another option to make the games look better. So I'm going to put this one onto five times because three times was working fine. And I've also got anastrophic filtering. So currently it was on two times. Now, if I put this on the four times and go back into the game, if it lags, then it's quite likely one of those options which I've just increased. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, that really looks incredible. Just remember what I say with your video settings. If you've got a lower end computer, then uh, obviously test things. But if things start lagging, just make a mental note of where and which settings you've messed around with. And then you can work from there like I just did. And that's it for today's Retro Hub in PSP setup guide for Windows PC. So, like I said at the start of the video, if you are new to Retro Hub, I'll leave a link in my description so you can actually follow the initial setup guide. You can get to grips of what Retro Hub is and how it operates. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit the notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.